years ago, Francis L. Greenfield was a business manager here in Washington, D.C. He is one of he, he is the one who actually got the training school moving back 40 years ago and up and running. So that's why we dedicated Francis L. Greenfield, just to give you, give you all an idea. Since then, hundreds and hundreds of individuals have passed through the doors of our training school and on our job sites. Right now we have training school we have, right now we have training school graduates working with for trailer brothers at the tunnel project, DC Water. We got them at Gold Service, that is a demolition project at St. Eve's for St. Elizabeth. Our training program program helps contractors meet the DC first source goal. And for contractors say they can't find qualified DC and Maryland residents, he's just not looking in the right place. He needs to come here. We renovate projects. The, the renovation project will add an additional floor and double the size of our training school to 10,000 square feet, allowing laborers, allowing, to, uh, allowing us to do more training for DC and Maryland residents. You know, today we're here talking about building a building, which is great, but it's not just a building that we're building here. We're building careers, and we're building a life, uh, a lifestyle for DC residents. You know. It was when Vincent Orange, or not Vincent Orange, I'm sorry, uh, Mayor Gray became the mayor. He held a job summit. I don't know if everybody remembers that. It was, I think, on K Street. He, he got together with the business community and said, we're going to get together and find out why we're not hiring D.C. residents. Does everybody remember that? Yes. Well, i got to tell you something. It, it, it bothered me because the answers that came back from that were, D.C. residents aren't qualified. D.C. residents can't pass a drug test. D.C. residents aren't smart enough. And D.C. residents can't pass a drug test. Well, i got to tell you, brothers and sisters, that's disgusting. And in this building today that we're building is to kind of change that dynamic. We're going to build not just a building, we're going to build a training center for D.C. residents so nobody, right. and I mean nobody, can have that excuse ever again that there aren't skilled D.C. residents right here in Washington, D.C. Brothers and sisters, that building across the street is going to be training people in concrete, form building, anything that a labor does, or then some. So we want people to still use DOES, that's fine, that's a great source to hire DC residents, but the fact of the matter is, contractors are still using it as an excuse. An excuse to say, I can't get good quality skilled people. Well, you know what? Let's take the excuses out of the game. Let's stop that. We're going to have a building across the street. You have a job, we will we'll train for that job. You got the people working right in DC that live in DC, pay DC taxes, and can't find a job. That's a disgrace. And I know our elected officials, they understand that, but it's time we now have to make sure everybody hears what we're trying to get done here. We are trying to change the unemployment rate in DC, the construction industry, to hire DC residents. You see all those tower cranes right now in the district? There's a ton of them. It's starting to boom again. But the only thing I don't see there are DC residents getting hired. So brothers and sisters, thank you for coming out here today. We're going to invite you back when the building's done, and we're going to show you DC residents learning skills, training skills, and life skills to compete in today's market. So the excuses are over. Thank you for coming, and God bless all of you. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. To, to do if you want to make sure DC residents are on a job. But one thing I think this center does is to lay the rest of the notion of capability. And I couldn't be, uh, I couldn't be uh, more pleased uh, that there is a place for district residents to go where people know how to do what's been done on the job because they've been on the job. That's the best way to be trained for construction work. Go on the job, do what has to be done, uh, and you will be trained on the job. You're, you're not trained for construction work simply by sitting in a room and looking at a blackboard of some kind. This is hard work, and these skills are increasingly more difficult to obtain. So I could not be more pleased. I, I just need to know when the, when, when the ribbon is going to be cut. That's just how important what you're doing here uh, is. Uh, thank you, I must say, for making sure uh, that when construction is done in the District of Columbia, district residents are not mere onlookers, but are participants because they have the skills. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for what you're doing here today. Now, we know we have to be in D.C.
keep residents working and we know we have a lot going on. We have a lot going on in the downtown and southwest, but we have a lot going here on right here in our neighborhoods. You look at Riggs Road and South Dakota Avenue and Georgia Avenue and Walter Reed. There's a lot of construction coming in the District of Columbia and we know centers like this will make sure DC residents are working. So I wanted to be here to say thank you for your commitment and for your investment. It's always good when we come to locations, isn't that right, Mr. Orange, where there's private investment happening? Uh, and so we want to thank you for spending your money to make DC better. We appreciate it. So you're going to count on me to stand with you 100% of the time. Thank you. Uh, you know, it's always, always a pleasure when you can come out and really do something about employment. If you talk to the Deputy Mayor for Economic Development here in the nation's capital, he indicates that we're going to create 55,000 jobs over the next decade. And I said, well, you know, that's great, but we have 35,000 unemployed people. So how are we going to do an overlay to match these jobs we're creating with the unemployed? Let's put D.C. residents back to work. And today is a big step, a major step where we are gonna train people and have apprenticeship programs and no longer will people be able to say, we can't find someone to work. You know, the, the only projects that really worked in the city are the ones where, you know, labor was involved. Look at the National Stadium. Josh, was labor involved there? Yes. yes. You know, I mean, uh, we have these PLAs and bring people together and get people working hard. This is what we can do. Uh, look at Mandarin Oriental, DC, USA. Those are the only projects that work. The other projects have had problems. And ain't nobody going to take care of us but us. And we have to learn that. We have to be selfish for ourselves. The District of Columbia is a $10 billion organization. And there's no reason why we can't put people back to work. There's no reason why we can't have affordable housing. And there's no reason why we can't have access to health care. And let me end by just saying we just want to be like James Brown. We don't want nobody to give us nothing. Open up the door and we get it ourselves. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to open up the doors for training. We're going to open up the doors for apprenticeship. We're going to open up the doors for affordable housing, the health care. And we're going to go in there and get it ourselves. And we're going to have a great quality of life. Thank you very much. And God bless us all. The phrase economic development. And it's fine using that phrase. But when I think about economic development, I'm really thinking about economic security. I'm thinking about the people behind these buildings. And that's vitally important to the equation on how we put people to a pathway to make sure they have secure careers so they're taking care of their families. That's how you impact it, the issues around education. That's how you impact the issues around affordable housing is to making sure that folks are economically secure in their beings, making sure they afford to put food on the family table. Uh, it's so very important. So I'm excited to be representing Ward 5. I'm excited to make sure that these renovations occur right here in my backyard, right across the street from Ward 4, from my cousins in Ward 4, but occur right here in Ward 5. Uh, I appreciate all the hard work that Local 567 uh, is doing, and I'm so excited to be a part of this. As you can see by the number of council members you have out here today, the support for Local 657 is incredible. And that's a testament to all the folks who are sitting out here and to the work that Anthony Fredericks and his team is doing. So let's give them a round of applause. Again, I want to thank you all for all the work that's been going on thus far. I'm, I'm happy to be a part of it, and I look forward to being continuously a partner in all the work that's occurring right here on this site and all the work that's occurring on these construction sites around the city. So thank you all so much. Uh, we have in this city now roughly $10 billion of development on the books going place all over the place, whether it's in Noma, down on the waterfront, in this neighborhood, across the river in Ward 7 and 8. And it's critically important that all of these jobs that are going to be created are filled by district residents. And what we have to do is be ready. You have to be ready for these jobs, and what we're doing here today is so important to make our residents ready to take the jobs when they come about. So it's just a very, very exciting time in our city today. Um, Washington, D.C. is right now recognized as the most dynamic city in America. On the finance side, we couldn't be doing better. Our budget is balanced. We have now $1.2 billion in reserve in the bank, and as I mentioned, development is unparalleled. And it's now incumbent upon us, all of us here today, to make sure that we take advantage of what the city has to offer so all of our residents who have been here through the difficult times can take advantage of the good times. 
And that's what my challenge and my responsibility is to you. So again, I want to thank you for endorsing me, for continuing to support me. You have a champion that the council has delivered for you, and I will continue to do that as we move forward. Thank you, and God bless all of you. That's what it's all about, because the excuse that contractors will continue to use is that, you know what, D.C. does not have certified, retrained folks ready to do these jobs, which is absolutely not true. All you got to do is look at the convention center hotel, and you can see that it's true. So with more training jobs, and then what our, what our job is, is to make sure we have as much funding as possible for these job training programs. Because you shouldn't have to do this by yourself. You should have a little help from the government to help you. So we're going to continue to make sure we restore some of those dollars for the job training programs. And more importantly, we're, we have to direct folks, especially some of our young, talented men and women in this city, who have, for a, lot, for a variety of reasons, have given up on the traditional school setting. That doesn't mean we should give up on them. That doesn't mean, because our truancy numbers are some of the highest in the country. So what's the point of taking them back to school if they're just going to leave again? Why don't we bring them right here? Get them trained. Yeah. Get them a job. Yeah. Let them get into the workforce and be positive. So those are some of the things we'll be working on. As again, you know you have me. Many of you have been in my office on many occasions. I know you'll keep coming there. Thank you very much for I'm having really me. I'm really proud to see I'm happy to see the number of uh, elected officials here today. And I really want to thank you and congratulate you for not having amnesia. And in fact, remembering those who were with you when you needed them. Because in today's environment, people somehow are together their memories are very short, extremely, extremely short. And I was really, I took note, and I want everybody to take note. And the council member from Ward 4 pledged here, and the 15th day of October, that you could count on her 100%. Not 99.9, .9, not 90, but 100%. So let's give her a hand for that commission. And I, I applaud all the pledges, Danny, that people have made and Anthony to train people to get good jobs in the District of Columbia. But I'm going to go one step further because I think that you know, we're tiptoeing around the issue. The same brothers and sisters about just good jobs. Some people can say that McDonald's provides good jobs. A CVS provides good jobs. But what we are talking about today is about good union jobs. Yeah. And I have not heard the big U mentioned. So I am mentioning today. This is about a fight for union jobs, because union jobs is what makes life productive in this nation's capital. So I just don't want politicians to say that we want to get good jobs. Okay? Miller and, Miller and Long might say they do good jobs, but they are anti a union. And what this fight is about is that every one of those cranes and every one of these buildings in this city ought to be built the way National Stadium was, the Convention Stadium, Convention Center was, and there were big unions! 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 Washington, Washington works best when the politicians say, Union, yes! Let's be